Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here. Welcome back to more uh, Let's Play Advance Wars. Um, in the last video, we began our uh, field training, and we were in the middle of an exercise on terrain advantage and disadvantages, so um, we're going to go ahead and quickly finish up this mission and probably start the next one, so let's see if we can get it done. Um, as you may have noticed, Olaf attacked us at the very end of the last turn, and as you can see, uh, the damage that he did uh, on both sides is kind of different. In the north, his mech did six damage to my infantry that was on the plains, but uh, when he attacked my infantry that was on the mountains on the bottom of the map, he only did four damage, so that really shows you that terrain advantage does make a difference in this game. So I'm basically going to use that for the rest of this battle to take out his mechs. Even though mechs are supposed to have the advantage over infantry, uh, the terrain gives me an extra boost of an advantage to actually, you know, take them out a lot easier. So I should be able to uh, finish up this mission in the next turn. And for whatever, for whatever reason, Olaf decides not to attack this turn. I guess it's because he knew he was going to lose no matter what, so... I guess that makes sense, even though it really doesn't, I guess. Uh, Nell's just reminding us how to save our game. I already talked about that in the last video, so I'm not going to really pay any attention to her right here. But yeah, uh, the whole point of this mission was use the terrain to your own advantage. And it's not only trees and mountains that give you cover. Uh, you can also get a defensive advantage from uh, cities and bases. Uh, but we'll go over that in the next mission because um, there are no cities and bases in this mission, so... We'll see, we'll see about that in the next mission. But yeah, he's pretty much done now. Uh, there's no way he could have won that. We have the advantage of numbers, and we also have the advantage over him that he was an idiot and didn't use the terrain to his advantage. So let's go ahead and see our ranking, of course, um, we should have gotten A ranking. So yay, A ranking. I'm not going to worry about saving, or, well I guess I will save, never mind. Okay, uh, now I'm going to show you all the missions that we have to do uh, for the field training before we can actually get started with the campaign mode. There are 13 missions in total. So there will be quite a few videos of field training before we actually get started with the main campaign. Um, I'll probably provide a link in the first video and this video to the first normal campaign video. So if um, all you future watchers, if you don't want to watch this, you can just go ahead and skip to that if you want. But um, I'm probably not going to explain all this stuff very much when I get to the normal campaign. So. Um, if you want to know how this game works, you might want to watch these field training videos first, but if you don't really care, and if you just want to watch the game, you can go ahead and skip. I won't have any objection to it. If you're watching this when I first upload this video, just wait until next week. I'll probably have the uh, first campaign videos up next Tuesday. So yeah, in this mission we have to uh, learn about how to capture cities and bases. Um, only infantry and mechs can capture bases, so keep that in mind, first of all. Now, in order to capture a base, you have to spend uh, at least two turns trying to capture it. Uh, each city and base has 20 HP, and when you capture uh, every turn, you take away how many HP you have from the city, so... Uh, my units have 10 HP right now, so I'm taking away 10 HP from the cities, which means in two turns I'll have the cities for my own. It's always a good thing to get cities, because in normal campaign, we'll get factories which allow us to build units. And to build units, we need funds. And when at every turn, you gain um, funds based on how many cities you have. And uh, I believe each city is worth 1,000 funds, so... If you have five cities, you'll gain 5,000 funds every turn, so it's important that you capture as much territory as you can uh, when you're going through a game like this, because um, 
Uh, the more funds you have, the more units you can build, and the more powerful units you can build as well. So I'm going to spend this next turn trying to start capturing all of these other cities. And uh, she's just telling us that you can also capture enemy cities as well as uh, neutral cities. Uh, another thing about cities is whenever you're standing on a city, uh, you'll gain 2 HP every turn that you're on the city, but only if you like don't have full HP. Once you have full HP, you can't gain any more HP for obvious reasons. So uh, That's another thing you can use cities for. And also, as I mentioned earlier on in this video, uh, cities can also give you a defensive boost as well, so uh, they're very important for this game. You want to try to capture as many cities as you can, and it's always nice to keep units on cities too, so... Yep, just felt like talking about that. Uh, one other thing I should probably mention about capturing is that there is actually another way you can win a mission. Um, I've already shown you that you can win a mission simply by destroying all the enemy units. But you can also win by capturing the enemy's HQ. In this instance, the enemy's HQ is on the far right side of the map, surrounded by mountains. Now what I could do for this chapter, is I could simply just send one of my infantry units to the south, across the bridge, and then attack the HQ that way. And then that unit would be completely um, undisturbed, because um, the tank units that are in the northeast corner of the map uh, they can't go across mountains, so their HQ is pretty much vulnerable from the south side. So as soon as I get rid of all these um, mechs and infantry, I can just like send a unit down there and just wait until I finish the, ch the map. Um, and I guess I should also talk about tank units really quickly as well. Uh, tank units are the basic powerhouse units of the game. Uh, you'll see that there will be a lot of tank units in this game. Uh, enemies generally try to build up their tank army as best as they can, and overall they're, they're a great unit to use. Uh, tanks are pretty powerful. Now, um, for this chapter, um, the tanks actually have a bit of an advantage against us, because uh, tanks are very good at attacking both infantry and mechs. Now, um, I know a lot of people are probably going to you know, say something about that statement, because actually, mechs are actually uh, supposed to have the advantage over tanks. But that's only if they attack the tanks. If they uh, are defending against the tanks, they won't take as much damage, but they'll still take quite a bit of damage as well. So you want to make sure that when you have mechs and the enemy has tanks, that you're attacking the tanks, and the tanks aren't attacking you, unless you're very well defended. So yeah, tanks, uh, I think I'd, I'd explain that enough. So what I'm probably going to do for the rest of this chapter is, well, obviously take out the rest of these infantry and mechs. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to send that unit down there across the mountains so it can capture the enemy HQ. And I'm really not even going to really bother with the tanks. I'll actually lure some of the tanks over so I can show you how you can fight them. But for the most part, you really don't have to do anything with those tanks. You can probably just even avoid them and just let them stay there because they will not play a factor in this mission whatsoever. So yeah, as you can probably see, I'm going to let that unit get that city, but I'm going to be able to destroy it next turn no matter what, so... Um, getting that city is not going to help them in any way. And of course, I should also mention that if the enemy captures your HQ, which, in my case, it's in the left corner, left side of the map, the far left side, uh, it'll be game over for you, so you do not want that to happen. I shouldn't have to say that, but I'm sure there's some people who would probably uh, not realize that off the top of their heads for whatever reason. So yeah, that's pretty much what the rest of this video is going to be, uh, me moving my unit over to the HQ. I'll uh, finish up this map in the next video because I'm obviously not going to be able to do it in this video. I probably could if I sped the footage up, but I really don't feel like doing that. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to use my mechs 
as a defensive cover in the mountains. And I'm going to lure the tanks over to attack them. And uh, since I'll be using the mountains as cover, uh, my mechs won't take very much damage, but they'll still get damaged quite a bit. But uh, we'll see that next time, because I'm running out of time here. So, um, yeah, this is Slim Kirby. This has been Advanced Wars. Uh, I'll see you guys next time for the next episode. Later, folks.